to be with you this morning. It's been a while since I've spoke on a Sunday morning, but certainly good to be with you and give you a lesson this morning. I changed the title of this lesson when I originally started working on it to, to uh, something different, but as you can see from the reading here, and I won't read the whole thing, but you guys are familiar with the story. When Jesus was talking to scribes and Pharisees, and he was really being critical of them. He talks about uh, verse six there, and they love the place of honor and feast, the best seats of the synagogues. At the end of that, he says, the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And so we're going to really talk about, and I did a lesson a while back on being a servant. But today we're going to talk about staying humble and kind. Originally, the title of this lesson, uh, got the uh, mic sign from my wife, so I think we're on. Um, about pride can, can lead to a fall. That's originally the thought that I had, and it's really derived from even myself throughout my life. I know it's something we'll constantly battle as you're young and you grow older and you become more educated, you experience success. And um, so this idea of staying humble and kind, you know, sometimes there's a song that really, it's got a great melody. And just the melody really resonates with you, but the words are bad. You know, there was a song, Take Me to Church. I don't even remember that song first came out. I said, this is a really cool song. I started singing it, and then I finally said, I don't know, saw the lyrics and read those. This is a terrible message. And I had a hard time getting that song out of my head. You know, Take Me to Church, you think that's a good song. Now, every once in a while, you get a cool melody, and you get a song that's got a good lyric. And that was, this was this song. When this song came out, Humble and Kind, I thought, it really touched me and touched a lot of people. In fact, it won a Grammy Award. It was a top country song of the year. Um, so the message really was an important one. And we're going to really kind of focus on that. Obviously, look at some scriptural examples and lessons of how this message is important. Just want to draw your attention to a couple things in this song. He, he starts talking about, and he's got three daughters. You don't know. Um, uh, Tim McGraw and his wife, Faith, they had three girls. And I could just see him singing this song to his daughters. Uh, Lori McKinnon actually is the author of the song, the writer. So she deserves most of the credit for the, for the messaging there. But you can, just, you can just understand how a father would sing this song to his daughter or son. And so the idea is, you know, uh, talks about, you know, leaving the door under the mat and so they could come home anytime they want. Kids leave home and then, but their parents, obviously, they're always welcome to come back. Uh, it talks about visiting your grandpa every time, every chance you get. Um, sometimes, and, and you'll see this when kids move away, they forget about their parents or their grandparents because life is just sucks you up and you get distracted with things that aren't important anymore. It used to be really exciting to go over grandma or grandpa's, and all of a sudden, life gets a hold of you and it, it doesn't have that luster anymore. Saying, don't forget about that. Go visit, um, <clears throat> you can say grandma or grandpa. Um, and again, this message, always stay humble and kind. Because that's what happens when, when you grow up. Sometimes you get prideful. And um, we're not humble. And we're not kind. Because the world sucks, in, sucks us in. And we become very prideful in our abilities and our successes. It's so easy to let pride get a hold of us. Um, talk simple things. Holding the door and... and Saying please and saying thank you. You know, I don't know if you know, guys know the young man there, Jude. You know, he'll go back and open the door a lot of times for us. And they say, okay, why is he doing that? It's just a simple gesture, but it's kind, isn't it? Uh, just simple things in life, everyday life, things that you do can have an impact. Um, it says when your dreams, your dreaming come to you. And you're going to have, you know, there's going to be success in your life. There'll be failures, but there's going to be success. But the point here he's making is when that happens, it's in the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. Um, he means pride here in a good way, being thankful for the things you accomplished, but stay humble and stay kind. It's so easy to get prideful. Um, don't hold a grudge or a chip. Here's why he says, bitterness keeps you from flying. 
So um, when you come prideful, a lot of times you, there's bitterness, there's resentment maybe toward someone. And um, don't let that grudge or that chip keep you from flying or excelling. It will. It'll hold you back. Um, at the end there, just go to the end of the song. And again, you can go back to the lyrics. There's a lot of good messages here. But he says, um, don't take for granted the love this life gives you. When you get where you're going, don't forget to turn back around. Help the next one in line. Always stay humble. Kind. Very good, great message. Very good song. Uh, again, one of my favorite songs. Um, and that's really what the lesson is going to be about today, is being humble and being kind and not being prideful. Now, as you're growing up from a toddler to middle age, or um, I'll say middle school and in high school, there's different things that you experience. And there's things like, you know, when I was a kid, I had, all, I mean, I had these trophies and it was all about getting as many trophies as I could get. And I, I still have those things on the shelf because they were in a box just wrapped up. And uh, I took, I was, I was happy. You know, I'd talk to other kids about how many trophies do you have? And I'd talk about how many trophies I had on my shelf. And that, so kids learn at a young age, you know, this, this idea of pride and maybe looking down on someone or thinking you're better than someone else because you got more trophies than them. And that just isn't, isn't the case, but that's obviously something we experience. And as you grow older, you know what? What people look like become important, right? So if you're handsome or you're good looking, all of a sudden you may look down towards someone that's maybe not as blessed as you are. Intelligence. Um, you know, when you're in school, you learn really quick who's smart and who's not. And, and uh, sometimes kids that are smart look down on kids that aren't, right? Can you, have, can you control that? You can't. You can, you can learn more, but your, your basic IQ, you know, you're, kinda, you're either gifted with it or you're not. And it's unfortunate, but you can look down on others, become prideful. You know, look, at, look how smart I am. Look at my GPA or look, look what I scored on the ACT. Now, granted, you can do better by studying, but my point is, is that these are things that pride can get the most of us. I talked about grades. Certainly, um, there's kids that I, I'll tell you, um, Cassie had to work a lot harder and she'll admit it than her brothers. She just had, and you know what? She did work harder and she did good because she worked hard. And there were many times she got a grade. I was more proud of her than maybe you know, Caleb getting an A in some class because he didn't have to work for it. And I knew that. Um, but we become prideful and think, if I got better grades, I'm better than someone else. And then as we get older, degrees, then it becomes, okay, you got an associate's degree, you got a bachelor's degree, you got a master's degree, you got a PhD. And these things can create pride in individuals. And I've seen it. I, I have a PhDs from MIT that report to me, and I got PhDs from other schools you wouldn't recognize and people with bachelor's degree. And I'm telling you, it, um, the most talented folks, it does, just because you have a degree doesn't mean you're better than someone else with a lower degree. In fact, some of my top performers I've ever had work for me only had lower degrees, not a PhD. But it, it's something that we can, uh, I'm not discouraging you from going to school and getting these degrees, by the way. I'm just saying, it's not something we should be prideful about. That, that's the point I'm making. And in profession, you know, there's certain professions we look up at. Other ones we think, oh, uh, I'm better than them because they do this and I do this. And my, and my profession's more highly regarded. And so my point I'm making is throughout our lives, there's thing, and of course, finally, money. That's just the possession of worldly things. Whether it be my car, my house, um, you name it, land that I own. Um, we can become prideful in those things and feel elevated and look down on others because of that. You know, when I was in school, I was always a short guy. Um, I mean, from the point that I was in grade school, I was with me and Beth Bunny, we were always at the end of the line. I don't know why they lined you up by height, but that was, you know, remind me, hey, you're one of the shortest ones in the class. Um, but that, and so I knew what it felt like, somebody looking down, <laughs> literally looking down on you. Um, but that was something that easily you can become prideful in. And we experienced that as we're growing up. Um, the one verse, I'll just call this our verse to remember for today's lesson, is Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. And that needs to be something that we ingrain in our minds. No matter 
how successful we are in our careers, in our lives, in regards to money and wealth. We need to remember that we should do nothing out of selfish ambition, thinking I'm, I'm, it's all about me, but rather we need to be humble and we need to esteem or value others above ourselves. So a lesson this morning from the Bible that actually drives home this point is going to be a lesson about the Edomites. And I don't know if you know who the Edomites are. We're going to, we're going to, if you don't, I'm going to give you a little history lesson on this. So Jacob and Esau were brothers. And this important point to remember in this point, they were brothers. So they were twins. Even more than brothers, they were actually twins. And you may remember Esau sold his, Jacob his birthright. Esau came out first, but he was entitled to the birthright, but he, he sold that to Jacob. Now, you go on later, I don't think he really was intending of giving him that birthright, but he sold it to him for some stew. And so he bestowed Isaac, and then, of course, there's a complex story there, but uh, his wife over here is that Isaac's going to give this birthright out to Esau, and he hurries up, she hurries up, and, and, and Jacob brings in the, the stew to his father, and the father bestows a blessing on Jacob. So he actually gets it. He actually takes Esau, his brother's birthright. Now, when Esau found out about that, you know what? He's going to kill Jacob. Um, even though he sold it to him, it didn't mean he was planning on giving it to him. So he sought to kill him. Jacob flees. And then uh, for a time, then he comes back. He's very humble when he came back to his brother and he, he welcomed him in. And so these two were reunited and they became brethren again and all is well. Um, but Esau marries two wives, the Hittite woman. That's going to be important here in a minute. But so he marries these wives that wasn't pleasing um, to his parents. And the Edomites are the descendants of Esau. So there's Jacob and Esau, the Israelites, descendants of Jacob. Esau, his descendants were the Edomites. And Jacob had 12 sons. And you may remember uh, those 12 sons. Um, Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Neptali, Gad, Asher, Isaac, or Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. I had to cheat, I know. I might have been able to pull that off, but I didn't want to get caught not pulling it off. But it's important, the last two, right? Joseph and Benjamin, they were special. Why were they special? Because of their mother and the love that Jacob had for their mother. And so Joseph was, he saw these dreams, right? Remember that you got the pretty coat and his father gave him and his brothers were jealous and they throw him in a pit and they sold him off right sold him off to some traders and so he goes down into Egypt and so they're in slavery he's in slavery down in Egypt big famine comes up and guess what Jacob and his family are, are going to die if they don't get some food because of the wisdom God had given Joseph Egypt had had uh, stuff stored up down there. So they sent his brothers down there and you, you know the story. They didn't recognize him. They didn't know this was Joseph, right? He ends up saving his family. He gets reconciled with his, his brethren and all is well. But something comes up. Um, that prosperity would soon come to an end. The Pharaoh at the time saw the, the growth of the Israelites, the prosperity of the Israelites. And he says, you know what? These people want to take us over. We're not careful. And so they slowly began to enslave the Israelites. And for over 200 years, the Israelites were slaves. And you know anything about slaves? You be owned by someone else. They controlled your life. But this was God's chosen people. God obviously had respect to Jacob. And so God sent them a deliverer, right? That was Moses. So he sent Moses to rescue them. And he, he, you remember the story, brought them across the Red Sea. And, uh, and, and of course, they're going back to the promised land. The promise made to their father Abraham that they're going to go to the promised land. And they wonder, and then they come upon some land that they needed to cross over. The land of the Edomites. And remember, Jacob and Esau were brothers. So this is Esau's kin. So these are the brothers, these two brothers, it was, it was their, their families. Um, so they come up to Edom, they had a long journey there. And uh, in Numbers 20, in verse 14, verse 21, it says, From Kadesh, Moses sent messengers to the king of Edom, 
Thus says your brother Israel, so you're reminding him, Israel was Edom's brother. He says, um, you know all the hardship that have befallen us, that our ancestors went down to Egypt, and we dwelt in Egypt for a long time, that the Egyptians dealt harshly with us and our ancestors. He's saying, you, look what we went through and how we were treated. So we cried to the Lord, and he heard our plea, and he sent a messenger who freed us from Egypt. Now we were in Kadesh, the town of the border of your territory. Allow us then to cross your country. We will not pass through the fields or vineyards, and we will not drink water from wells. We will follow the king's highway, turning off neither to the right or the left until we have crossed the territory. He's saying, we'll come through. We're not going to eat your food. We're not going to disturb anything you own. Even though we're brethren, we're not going to ask that of you. But Edom answered him, you shall not pass through us. Else we will go out against you with a sword. The Israelites said to him, we will keep to beaten track. If, and if we are cattle, drink your water, we will pay for it. We ask only for passage on foot. It is but a small matter. You shall not pass through. And Edom went out against them in heavy force, strongly armed, so Edom would not let Israel cross the territory, and Israel turned away from them. They wouldn't let him come through, even though they were brother. Esau and Jacob, descendants, they would not let him come through. The Edomites were very prideful people. And you might say, why? What generated this pride? Um, so they were in a place called, a mountain called Salem. And this mountain was a stronghold of Edom. And they felt confident they could not be conquered because of what they, they built this, literally this kingdom around this giant rock fortress. And it's amazing. Archaeologists have gone over and excavated this. They had complex aqueducts and waterways that fed this, uh, this kingdom. And they became very prideful because of that. Um, you can still see some of the remnants over there of, of, of this as kingdom as it existed. Um, you go up there, these they'd complicated caves and walls, and they felt fortified. I don't know if you've ever been up around, spending time around rocks, but when you're, you don't feel like anything can move that rock. And you know what? And it was, it was true. They were, they were a tough kingdom to be conquered because of, they were this fortified, they had this fortified company or, or, or kingdom. Um, they felt secure. They were proud people. You know what it did? It generated pride in their hearts. They felt superior to others, and especially to their brother. Their brother needed to come through this territory. They became so prideful and confident in, in who they were and what they had accomplished, they wouldn't even allow their brother or, or children of their brother to pass through. Um, shame on you and me. We ever treat our brother, I'm saying physical, or family, say brother or family, or even our spiritual family, treat them with disrespect, and be prideful because of who we are. Again, shame on us when this happens. When a brother needs help, we see someone in need and needs some help, and we look the other way, or we turn the other way, even though we have the ability to help them. When the brother needed help, the pride in their heart was shown, and their arrogance was demonstrated. And then we find Deuteronomy 2, 2 and 8. So they've wandered in the wilderness for 40 years now. It says, the Lord said to me, you have been skirting this hill country long enough. Now turn north and charge the people as follows. You will be passing through the territory of your kinsmen, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, though they will be afraid of you and be careful not to provoke them. Say, so I'm going to let you pass through your, your, your kinsman's territory. For I will not give you their land so much as foot can tread on. I have given the hill country of Seir as the possession of, to Esau. So God, the reason why they had that possession, which they, this is what they missed, is because God gave it to them. So what food you eat, you shall obtain from them for money. Even the water you drink, you shall procure from them for money. Indeed, the Lord your God has blessed you in all your undertakings. He has watched over your wanderings through the great wilderness. The Lord your God has been with you these past 40 years. You have lacked nothing. So Esau, um, his descendants didn't realize what they had 
even though they felt fortified, they were safe because God was protecting them. And that was one thing they didn't realize. And then we come to the, the point that I'm bringing in, in the, for the example of today's lesson. And that's in Obadiah chapter one. It says the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart. The pride of thine heart hath greatly uh, hath deceived thee. That thou dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Whose habitation is as, as high that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? They were, nobody can bring me down. That's the pride and arrogance that they had. It says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I, will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So why shouldn't we be prideful? Because God hates pride, and God will bring you down, either in this life or the next. And this is the message here. The, the Edomites become prideful, and you can see the end of their result was destruction. And let me just tell you, pride will bring us down today as well. It'll bring you and me down. Proverbs 8 and 13 says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, perverse speech. God hates pride. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. The Lord detests all proud heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. And so we think about, and you've seen this in public, a child uh, talks back to a parent or talks badly about their parents, disrespects those in authority. And let me tell you, children out there, uh, don't let this be descriptive of you. Um, respect your parents. Don't be proudful. Respectful and be humble in the, in, in the presence of your parents and authority. Because of the way they treat their parents, they treat teachers and others who may have authority over them. We shouldn't be that way. We can't be that way because God doesn't want us to be that way. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24 says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. So he, he outlines a few things here that you can become proudful in. Obviously, wisdom. I talked about intelligence. As you go off to school and you learn more, you can see that it can generate uh, pride. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm not as strong as I used to be. And young, you see some of these young men, man, they're really strong and stout. That can, that can generate pride. And you think you're better than others because you've you got this physical stature that makes you better than other folks around you. Success, money and success in your career. These are other things that can uh, cause pride and cause it to bring us down. 1 John 2, 16 says, For all that is in the world, the dyers of flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And so when we think about um, things that can cause us to um, be prideful, what does pride do? First thing it does, it ignore instruction. Stop listening, right, parents. Parents are telling you something. You know what? You're not hearing a thing. You ain't listening to anything they're saying. Or even somebody else, maybe even here in the church, is maybe trying to give you some advice. And you know what? It's going in one ear and right out the other. What that is? That's P-R-I-D-E. It's pride. That's what's going to keep you from listening. You're going to reject reproof. And so you do something you shouldn't do. And um, you're, someone's reproving or, or giving you instruction regarding that. You're just going to reject it. You're not even going to listen to it. You don't care about it. That's what, that's what pride's going to do. In our words, in our actions, they become evil. What we say and what we do. That's pride. That's, that's what the Edomites were guilty of. Let's be careful that doesn't come true of us. So just wrapping things up here. Always stay humble and kind. Don't take for granted the love this life gives you. When you get where you're going, don't forget to turn back around. 
Help the next one in line. Always stay humble and kind. You know, I was in a, it wasn't really a board meeting. It was a leadership meeting. And um, they were all executives in the room. And it was, it was a bonding exercise. We're all going to get closer together. So we started talking about where we came from. And, they're going, and I'm actually, I'm the last one at the table. And so as they go around, people start talking about what school they went to and the college they went to. And I think, man, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the ugly duckling here. Gets to me, I would say, oh, I was raised on a farm. Everybody else was, had went to these very exclusive schools, had these very prestigious degrees, and here I am. I start thinking, okay, what? How, how did I get here? I'm like the odd duck, and Harry and I used to joke, we go to some of these places, you know, two farm boys, how do we get where we're at? Um, and I just, you know, it was, uh, and, and when it got to me, I thought, it, it finally dawned on me, you know, if you're in trouble, or something breaks down, those are the last people you want beside you or in your car. They have no idea what to do. I can tell you, it, it, when I was raised, um, if something came up, something broke, you didn't like, well, we're done. That wasn't like, I got to get this fixed. I get to, hey, hey's got to get down today, and I've got to have it put up by the markers. Rain's coming on Wednesday. And we always figured out how to get it done. We really did. I can... Um, one time I was traveling with Gary. If you ever travel with Gary, his tires look looks like one of them's about ready to go anytime. On, on, at least some of the old stuff. We got in, we were going over something the other night. Looked at his tires and said, man, here we go, bald tires again. But then you know I was with him one time, and sure enough, we're driving down the interstate. Tire blows. Went, oh my tire! Blew. What am I? What are we going to do? And you know what? I just stood back and watched. He grabbed something out of the back of the, the, the truck. It was, a, it was a piece of wood, it had angles on two sides. Shoved down underneath that one tire, drove that trailer right up on there. Boom, he had that. Man, that's really a great idea. He pulls out, he's got an impact wrench in his truck with already the socket on. He knows what the socket is, it goes on those. He had that thing, that tire off there. I'm not kidding you, in less than three or four minutes. Um, I'll, NASCAR. Um, mechanics would have been impressed with how quickly that tire got changed. And I just sat there and watched him do it. And it just reminded me of, you know, that's kind of on the farm, that's the way you operate. You, you, you plan for things. And if something happened, you could, you could fix it because that's what you were taught to do. If there's a barrier there, you find a way around it, over it, or you, or you go through it. That's just the way, and, you know, that, and that's, um, that's not being prideful. There, um, Again, I was, I was impressed by what he did there, but it's the fact that um, in, in life, there, there's things that barriers you're gonna run into. And just because you've achieved some kind of, I'll say level of success, whether it be in money and career and in your profession, um, don't be prideful about it. Be thankful. If you think about what uh, humble and kindness is, and essentially those two words are linked together, and we're going to close this down. Um, when you're humble, you're kind. Because it puts you in and you're, you're putting others above yourself. And that's really the message of today. Is that um, don't do things out of selfish ambition. Saying, how can I do something that benefits me? But rather, we need to value others. And we do these things to help others, not ourselves. That's really the message. If you listen well this morning. You can get out your song books and turn to the song of invitation, just as I am. You've never been, a, been baptized. Uh, you have this opportunity to come forward. The water's ready. Repent of your sins. Make that great confession. If you believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you'll be baptized. Or if you, we need the prayers of the brethren in any way, please come while together stand, Moses.